<clears throat> All right, um, so uh, a monkey, a dog, and a goldfish were asked to climb a tree. Um, who would do the best at performing this task? Well, obviously the monkey, right? Uh, so, you know, my name is Jonathan Chow, and um, trust me when I say this, uh, I did not answer this question for no reason. Um, so I'm sure everybody in this room has uh, experienced the effect of the No Child Left Behind Act. Um, for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, the No Child Left Behind Act was uh, legislation that was proposed by President George W. Bush in 2001 and was uh, signed into law in 2002. Uh, it is the main law for the kindergarten, K-12 education in the United States and affects uh, every public school um, in the country. Um, what this law holds is it holds schools accountable for how kids learn and achieve. And uh, what this means is annual testing in math and reading are administered and schools must bring all students, even those in special education, um, up to proficient levels on uh, their tests. And um, failure to do so will subject these schools to penalties. And what I mean by proficient is uh, uh, the adequate yearly pro uh, progress, which is the minimum level of improvement that states, school districts, and schools must achieve uh, every year. And uh, the penalties would be uh, firing of teachers who are not meeting these uh, goals uh, with their students, or, um, or even shutting down a school. So um, this leads me to uh, my claim, uh, main claim, which is going to be the, the uh, No Child Left Behind Act um, actually undermines the, um, the education in the United States. Okay, so uh, that leads me to my first uh, contention, which will be uh, the test that offered offered uh, offers an unreliable benchmark for students. And uh, my second contention would be using these scores um, as a backbone of education. Uh, using these scores to benchmark, um, using these scores as the backbone of education harms the students to benchmark the um, like how how well a child is doing. Okay, and um, so. My first uh, contention, I'd like to start off actually with, uh, with a quote from uh, Susan J. Uh, Hallward, a elementary school teacher who has taught for over uh, 17 years. Um, As a teacher, I measure progress and achievement for my students on a daily basis. In an increasingly diverse public school setting, there is not one educational pedagogy that fits all students. Uh, we study and discuss differentiated curriculum and modify teaching strategies. So, which leads me to my first contention, which is with every child coming in, uh, coming from a wide variety of abilities and backgrounds, a one-size-fits-all approach pro um, provides an inaccurate depiction of a student's abilities. So, which leads me to my first point. Uh, these tests only offer one snapshot of a student's achievement and does not take note of where a child started or how much they may have progressed. So, what that means is, okay, a child may come from a from another country or they may have a learning development. And from there, how are you gonna measure it just from standardized testing with all the tests that are the same? Um, which leads me to my second point. The same test is administered to students um, that have cognitive disability, speak entry level of English, or have speech or language delays. Okay, so with this, there's, there's no way that having a standardized test can accurately uh, show students how well they've been doing or evaluate them well for uh, the needs that are required for them. Uh, my second contention, contention would be using students' test scores as a lever to drive educational improvement does more harm than good. Okay, and um, so my, which leads to my first point, schools end up teaching to the test, which uh, narrows out the curriculum, leaving them less engaging and creative. And again, I wanna bring uh, Susan J. Halbart uh, back into the picture. Um, she, she, and I quote, I've always told people I have the best job in the world. I crafted curriculum that makes students think they had fun while learning. At the end of the day, I felt energized. But today, more often than not, I feel demoralized. The overemphasis abandons the past pursuit of learning, that, uh, of testing over, abandons the past pursuit of learning that fully encompasses arts, music, social studies, and science. Um, the educational research uh, complete actually found that almost 71% of schools have reduced instruction times for these uh, aforementioned courses. Okay, so a force of test takers are being produced uh, instead of students that develop the abilities to cooperate and solve problems to uh, explore, you know, what their passion is or what their calling is in life. 
Um, in conclusion, uh, the, the standardized approach to education that overemphasizes testing does not accurately assess the individual needs of all students, thus limiting the degree of potential students have to succeed. Five thirteen. Oh, so you can sit down. I don't like targeting people. All right, I kept waiting for the punchline for the story at the beginning, and I don't know why it never showed up. And now I'm trying to figure out how it's related to uh, the proposition that you're talking about, so that's a little bit confusing. I did think your proposition was clearly identified. That part was, was solid. Uh, you spent a lot of time kind of giving background on uh, No Child Left Behind, and that was okay. I think that that uh, you know, kind of explains some of the context and some of the controversy. Uh, the, like I said, the proposition is clearly identified. You're, you do have uh, a preview of what the supporting points are, but the phrasing of those secondary points is not very clear, especially the second one in the preview. Now, it was a little bit sharper when you got to the body of the speech on the second point. On the first point, you don't even remind us what the original claim was. You just kind of dive right into the argument. Uh, you use a single teacher as an example of your point uh, in two different sections in the speech. It's the same teacher, and there's no data other than the teacher's opinion to back this up. So I think that that's a little bit problematic. I didn't hear any information about uh, you know, uh, statistical uh, performance levels uh, or uh, schools that are being harmed, except for except for uh, the one piece of data that said some of the schools report, I think it was three quarters of the schools report, decreased instruction in some of the other fields. Uh, so that, that would suggest that there is uh, a little bit of statistical data there, but I think it needs to be a little bit stronger, especially when you're making the argument that says that it's not working or that it's having a negative effect. Uh, I don't know why decreasing the amount of time that students spend each week on music, art, or any of the other th programs that you mentioned uh, is harmful. There's no way that I've given to assess or evaluate that, so that's a little bit of a problem. Um, I know generally what your argument is, but I think that you need a lot better evidence on those points, and the only authoritative voice you have is a classroom teacher, which I think is a good starting point, but by itself it's not really going to be very generalizable, so that's uh, problematic. All right, thank you.